Lemon Amiga presents A Play Giant Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show Play guide and review. This episode will be taking a look at Battle Chess, which was released in time for Christmas of 1988 and was developed and published by Interplay. Battle Chess is an isometric 3D chess simulator, and if we get rid of that nag screen from the copy protection, of course, this is a crack from 1988, it would be a crack by now. And if we remove that and press the right mouse button, we can access the options. From here we can load and save game, and we can actually set up the board in an order of our heart's desire. We can ask the computer to suggest a move, and we can also turn off and on 2D and 3D mode. Looking at the 2D mode, it's pretty bland compared to the 3D mode, and the 3D is what really sold this game. We can also choose between a number of playing options, either we can play on our own against the CPU or as a two player, either as physical two player or on a null modem or on a modem connection. And we can also choose the level of difficulty for the CPU player. For this I'll be choosing level difficulty 1, which is no pushover as you are about to see. In chess, the objective is to take on and defeat your opponent. In this case, the opponent is the CPU, and by moving our pieces around the board, we can attack other pieces and remove opponent pieces from the board. The main objective is to take the king from the board by capturing him by moving one of your pieces onto the square that the king inhabits. To help us, we have a number of military-type army units. The front row are called pawns, and they can move two squares at the beginning, and then one square forward after that. On the bottom row on the left, you can see the castle, which is also called a rook, and that can move any number of squares in a horizontal or vertical position. The second one along is actually a knight, and we've used our knights already. They can move three squares in an L shape, either two up and one across, or one up and two across. Next to that, there are two bishops, and they can move any number of squares diagonally. And next to that, there is the queen, who can move any number of squares in any direction. And then there is the king, who can only move one square at a time. To help us, you may notice a flashing reticule, and when we click on our character, whichever one we choose, it will highlight the possible moves of that character. So there is absolutely no way we can choose an illegal move. In this way, it is easy to investigate potential moves by clicking on our characters individually and seeing where we can go. And that is just another visual aid to the game. It isn't necessary to do that, but it certainly helps. If you are playing against a human opponent, then they will basically be able to see your logic played out in front of them. So perhaps it isn't wise to do that. But again, you can play this two-player over a null modem cable, Amiga to Amiga, or over a modem cable as well if you have dial-up in this day and age if you still have dial-up then it is still possible to play the game you may be surprised to know that there are actually 30,000 moves built into the computer and you can be assured that the computer will use all of those moves or most of those to try and defeat you and there are also 35 battle animations in this game which we shall see some of a little later on because when we take opponents they will be animated and well the winner of the battle is predetermined but we shall see an animation of that when that happens a little later on and that was yet another draw to this game the original inspiration behind this project actually came from a scene in star wars you may remember the characters play a 3d puzzle game on a chess type board where a monster throws the opponents around and that is replicated with the rooks and a number of opponents in this game and I can't remember which actually the rook and the other opponent is but maybe we shall see that later on 
and so Star Wars was the major inspirer and this game has gone on to inspire scenes in movies because well those animated characters are pretty well drawn and well animated and make a tremendous noise when they walk around the screen unfortunately there is no in-game music in this version on the PC CD-ROM there was orchestral music but the Amiga which was basically the first to be released out of all the conversions that does not have music but what it does have is a great range of sound effects. It's certainly great to hear the army banging crash as they walk and collide with their enemies. When we wield our staff and our battle weapons they will clang and crash and the queen can actually use magic to defeat her enemies and some of the bishops can as well. In fact the king has a gun and if you try to defeat the king with a bishop then the king will pull out his gun and shoot him dead just like Raiders of the Lost Ark. So a number of film references have found their way into this production. The graphics are very well drawn and we can see sand there on the board which is a step up from a normal board game. But in the meantime let's launch an attack and the first skirmish launches with a knight attacking my rook. Well fortunately that knight is going to destroy my rook just like this. In chess, it's always a good idea to plan ahead at least two or three moves and have a backup plan and maybe even an emergency plan at the ready. It helps to study your opponent's moves and their potential opportunities before you make one of your own. Sometimes you have to sacrifice pieces in this game in order to take larger pieces on the opposite side. But sometimes it's a game of luck or the judgement and sometimes the enemy can make mistakes. On the Amiga the enemy does not make mistakes and your opponent will always assume command of any match, even on this level 1. In fact in Germany they complained that the AI in this game was too easy but to my mind the AI is way too hard even on the novice setting and certainly this is not a children's game. In battle chess every move from the original chess game is there and we can use every move at our disposal. That includes castling the king. You can see the opportunity there, the opponent is taking the opportunity to castle the king and we can do that just by moving the king into that position. The rook there will automatically move over and move the king out of the way. It also helps to measure the strengths and weaknesses of every piece. So sometimes taking the opportunity to remove those pawns off the table is a good idea because those weaker pieces will actually block the lines of the stronger pieces and so if we remove those that adds extra space in which we can manoeuvre. Basically in chess pawns are expendable and we can line those and march those up to the front and take on the enemy but we really need those out of the way if we are actually going to get anywhere. It is difficult to get one of those over to the other side of the board but if you do then you can replace your pawn with any other piece even the pieces which you haven't captured right now. So if you get a pawn over there you can replace that with a queen and have two queens on the board. So Battle Chess does take a number of liberties with the actual game because unless you buy two chess sets you will not have two queens to throw on your side of the table. The knights can also be used for surprise attacks and they can manoeuvre their way at angles around the board and sometimes surprise attacks with the knight. You can shift other pieces out of the way and literally jump over pieces in his way to get to his opportune spots. Of all the other pieces maybe the queen is the most powerful and it's best to save her and hang her back until you really need her because sometimes if you throw the queen into action early that just opens the door for that piece to be destroyed. 
so sometimes saving pieces of your favourite opportunities is a really good idea and I'm actually a rook down already. You can see there the computer is taking forever to think about these moves even on level 1 and this is with an Amiga 3000. You can see after contemplation and consideration due diligence has not revealed the fact that the king now is under checkmate. And that means we can only move one square at a time with the king so if we don't get out of her sights then the queen will take us and take the opportunity to win the game so we only have one real move available let's take it and get out of the way as long as the game goes on the computer will take longer and longer to consider each move and then it will strike and leave us for dead so even on an Amiga 3000, as I say, play can be slow and playing this on an A500 on maximum settings, the computer may take maybe 20 minutes to consider a move which is long and boring. You may notice there is not a clock on screen and so we cannot flick switches and stop clocks to alter our progress in two player mode and it would really help if there was a time limit on these things and then the computer wouldn't take all night to think about it. But eventually, we will not see its moves on the table. All we can see is its final evident move. And so, eyes peeled there for some action on the table. And it's the gunfight at the OK Corral. Sometimes waiting for this thing to pull out a gun and pull the trigger. So, still no action on the board. Fingers crossed that that thing hasn't seen an opportunity to wipe me out. And with so many pieces all over the place, well, my front line has been defenceless for a long time. There's a big hole there in my front line. And so if I don't plug that pretty soon, then the computer may just move straight through it and take the king. So waiting, waiting, waiting here for another move. Finally, I can actually swing my plan into progress. Now things are beginning to heat up and action is starting to fly. The computer will take no bones about taking me at every opportunity and so after a little more consideration that is what it is about to do. So the pawn there can take a knight pretty easily enough and we will be rewarded with an animation whenever a piece takes an opponent. Again, you've got to love those extra clangy sound effects and without that this game would be pretty boring but thanks to the Amiga's 16 colour palette there and its amazing Paula chip we can often find a pretty entertaining and fun experience particularly when we strive to match new opponents together and find all those great animations. Definitely the animations are the best part of the game and it makes this game worth playing. So I'm actually going to take the pawn, you can see in the centre of the board with the bishop. Having studied this I can see no other alternative and no repercussions for this action. Here we go. However, due to the AI involved in this game, the Amiga will actually learn our moves and memorise our attack patterns and if we go for pawns, then the computer will go for our pawns in retaliation. Luckily, this is not Deep Blue, this is not a Grand Master, and this is not Kasparov. The computer will not memorise moves in the shape of death moves and suicide moves, and sacrifice moves which we have to make in order to beat the computer. 
Luckily, we can set traps and we can set long-term plans into action. And as I say, we can copy the computer and take pawn for pawn. And sometimes clearing that way is the best way. Sometimes we can also use pieces as a mobile roadblock, knowing that some pieces can't move unless we get out of the way. The pawns are a prime example of that, and if a pawn moves in front of our queen, it makes sure that we cannot take that pawn because there are two pawns either side. The pawns can only take in a diagonal fashion, and every other piece can take directly. So if the computer moves the centre pawn there in front of the queen, that will make the queen unable to move forward because if she does that well she'll take the pawn but then she'll get attacked and that's the enemy there actually trying to set a trap for us so let's move our pawn forward and try and set a trap for it unfortunately we can see on the left one of our pawns is actually vacant and it won't be long before the computer notices that and takes its sanctions down on our head Battle Chess was created by a small team itself, maybe even a small army. Among the coders, the Yavesh Patel there was a main coder of Bard's Tale and Borrowed Time and Championship Golf. The other coder was Troy Worrell and he also helped code Bard's Tale 1 and 2 and Borrowed Time. The graphics were drawn by Bruce Schlickbarn, who went on to work on Bard's Tale 3 in 1991 and Dungeon Master 2 in 1995 and he also worked with Todd Kamasto in the 1990s creating the 21st edition of Star Trek in 1993 and Todd Kamasto was a top graphic artist for Interplay he created graphics for The Bard's Tale 1, 2 and 3 as well as Castles in 92 and The Lost Vikings, the absolutely tremendous puzzle game in 1993 for Interplay and the sound effects in this game are created by Kurt Hayden and Kurt Hayden also worked on Neuromancer for EA in 1989 before EA and Interplay basically split their allegiances and went their separate ways. I must say the variety of play options is terrific and we can save our point at any point onto a disc and we can then reload that and have a hot seat tournament with any number of friends who can take it in rounds to play this game and so the expansion options with a number of friends is incredible especially in its day because in 1988 these graphics looked incredible it may be difficult to imagine now but back in the day these graphics were an Amiga benefit but there are a number of other conversions available on the market and this game was shortly converted to the Acorn Archimedes the Apple II the Commodore 64, the Atari ST, the Apple Mac, the FM Towns Marty machines, and also the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, the DOS, PC VGA, which got graphics similar to the Amiga finally, and also for the Sharp X6800 machine, and also a really good example for the 3DO. Remember the 3DO was created by the same team who brought us the Amiga 1000. They basically left Commodore and created their own machine. So the 3DO was basically a new Amiga. So maybe the 3DO is the best version of them all. And you can certainly see from those screenshots there is a big difference. Particularly on the 8 bits compared to the 16 bits of this game. And well I wouldn't say the Amiga is the best, it was certainly the pioneer, but maybe there are better versions on offer. So the Amiga version has got plus points and a few minus points compared to a few other conversions. Mainly the thinking time has improved on these different machines. And as I say trying to play this on an Amiga 500 on the hardest setting might take all day. 
so that isn't appreciated when all you want to do is have a quick game of chess and the AI means that we can't get amazing scores and there are no scores in this game it's either a win or a lose and that is basically it I think you can also draw in the game if you have a stalemate situation so at least that is counted for I've certainly been in a situation myself where I've been maneuvering odd pieces around the board seemingly forever and not being able to take the final piece so perhaps stalemates are catered for and certainly in a checkmate situation if the king cannot escape then the game will take over and finish off the move there is also an option to set a time limit for the game so that the game has to be completed within that certain time otherwise the opponent will lose a score but that isn't an easy option to set and that could have done with a better method of operation and so this game isn't perfect it certainly does what it does very well but I'm afraid it is just a little too slow hence the scores if we take a look at the Lemon Amiga site the fans of the Lemon Amiga website voted this game up to 80% and the other scores in the magazines, Amiga Computing gave this 77%, Amiga Format gave this 84%, Commodore User gave it 85 and Amiga User International gave this an incredible 90% in December 1988, praising its graphics and superb sound effects of the CPU players, and it commented that the CPU plays a mean game of chess. Well, it certainly does play a mean game of chess, pretty too mean in my opinion, but then again, maybe I'm just no good at chess. So that's my review basically over. We will see the sequel after this. For the last 10 minutes, we will take a look at Battle Chess 2, but Chinese chess wasn't as good as the original chess, but we will take a look at that. In the meantime, the computer is planning a maneuver. You saw him moving the rook there into a prime position and unless I move my pieces I'm gonna be fried so I don't really want to be toast at this point of the game and considering all my options I don't have much I can do at the moment the pieces are all too spread out I still have the Queen but probably my best pieces are the bishops and I'm going to use this bishop to distract the rook and hopefully the rook will come and attack me and then I will take him with the Queen and that will also save the rook from taking my rook in the bottom right hand corner let's see if the enemy is wise to that attack and if it isn't I'm basically in trouble because the opponent's pawn could take my bishop which have just moved straight away will the pawn take the bishop or will the rook take the rook well we don't have very long to wait to find out the answer point the biggest threat is now the pawn so if I now take that pawn maybe I'll be under threat from the bishop but that's still better than standing there waiting to get slaughtered Because there are way too many pawns at this stage and not enough good pieces the enemy thinks it's wise to take the pawn which is actually protecting the right flank of the king and that means the direct attack on the king should be possible I don't like the way the queen is looming as well to set the king on a diagonal <laughs> the 
this ultimately leads to checkmate. Unfortunately, I am boxed in in this corner. I can move forward one square and that will put me out of line of the rook and into the clutches of the queen. So that's basically all I can do. Well, unless I want to be taken by the knight or unless I want to be moved into the bottom corner. And well, let's not delay the inevitable. Let's just move forward and the queen will probably now move down and put me into double position there and that basically means I am defeated and so if you don't have those great pieces at the end and I still have my queen there loitering around but I can't use her to take any of those pawns or to come to my aid basically because the computer has me in checkmate all I can do is basically move the pawn forward and to block that attack temporarily but I fully expect the queen to move forward and to act and pincer me into that corner and then it will be game over. So, well, I think this game is pretty well. It stands up on its own merits after all these years. It's certainly not a game I come back to again and again, but in the 1990s when I got to play this, I do have a number of fond memories, particularly the animations. So it is a well-crafted game certainly is entertaining but in one player mode you'll get your ass kicked and for that reason I rate it down probably 7 out of 10. So I am just about to move my pawn forward now and initiate my death throws in order to see the death sequence and it won't be too long from here. Uh, let's just move that thing up there finally. And now the queen, as I say, will take the pawn and then the king straight away. I have nowhere to move the king. I am in stalemate checkmate and that's probably the worst position you can be in. And with that, it's game over. Like most chess games, there is no high score because there are no scores in chess. It's win, lose or draw. So we don't get to enter any competitive scores. But what we do get to do is to put this in 2D mode. And we can actually arrange these pieces in 2D mode into a pattern which our heart is contented with. So I will first of all remove a number of pieces from this board and set up an ideal scenario for me so that I can show you a few more of those 35 amazing battle moves. So even if you can't face up an opponent directly, you can set up a trigger happy position there by setting up a rigged match. And then if we click done, then we get to play that match. And we get to see, well, red has too many kings there, unfortunately, well, that's not going to work. So let's place the king and take out a number of pieces let's try that again and now we get to play that match the red player will always take the first goal and you might be surprised that it isn't white and black with this being chess but it is now red and blue and that actually improves the game in my opinion so taking a look we can also rearrange any pieces in mid game and we can actually castle the king there and make things a little harder for the opponent and we can rig the game and cheat to our heart's content. We can even ask the CPU to suggest a move for us if we can't come up with one on our own. We can replay moves if we made a mistake and we can also take back moves as well. So there is no reason for being defeated in this game if you really don't want to. In this situation you can see my army is split into two groups and all I want to do is face the queen off against the knight and see what happens. Sometimes these animations are quite funny and that's definitely the best part about this game and it's probably the best reason to play it. It is very rare for the computer to make mistakes 
but in this case the computer has made a mistake by trying to attack me with its queen so I know what you are thinking let's have some queen on queen action and for an extra special bonus here's the queen with the king And that's how you win. Moving on, Chinese Chess was Battle Chess 2, released in 1991. This game features brand new graphics and sound effects, and apparently this game mirrors the actual Chinese Chess experience. Although I have no idea how to play Chinese Chess, and so what you will see me doing is actually playing very badly. You can move pieces around the board, but I have no idea how many spaces those people can move, and what kind of impact damage that they can actually progress. But you can see the same options there, 2D or 3D board, and we can also connect our Amigas or modems together and play like that. And the 2D version is pretty boring, and so the 3D version is probably the best one to go for. And so suggest moves there, replay, show layout, and help. So you actually get two moves there, suggest move and help, so that's a new one, but yes, it doesn't really help me with this game because I cannot figure out how to attack different pieces. And so what you'll see me doing is basically moving pieces around. Perhaps if you're good at Chinese chess and rate this game, perhaps you can leave a comment to explain yes, it is a good conversion or no, it is a terrible conversion. But you can see the graphics have certainly had an improve. And there's a river, just like Chinese chess, running through the actual centre of the screen. And you can see chariots moving there to represent the rooks, which are more or less knights in this version. And so you'll find similar pieces, and you can actually play Chinese chess with real chess. But those pieces will move in a different manner, and they require a different direction to take and destroy their opponents. So the game does attempt to show you possible moves there. And you can hear music jingles in the background when we make moves. And whether we make our good moves or bad moves, I've still no idea, but you will hear a jingle playing in the background and cannon fire and things exploding and just like that. But for my money, for a number of reasons, I don't rate this game as highly as I did Battle Chess, not only because I can't play it, but even though Dragon is there, cannons and other projectiles maybe projectiles would have been a good idea in the medieval game of the first game so it's still great to see here but all those extra elements and great smooth graphics there amazingly smooth animation don't make up for an amazing game and this basically only got 60 percent which is a very weedy score indeed given all those factors and I can certainly agree 60% is definitely the way to go. There was a rumour that there was a lot of unsold copies of this game shipped out to China, uh, but for some reason they weren't sold, uh, but that could be an unsubstantiated rumour. But I think you will agree that Chinese chess is nowhere near as good as the original. But Interplay are still in existence, and there are more rumours of yet another game, a third game in the trilogy, that was supposed to be previewed last year in 2012 but they developed a kickstarter for that campaign which was not successful so interplay are having to go the hard way and find funds growing to banks and things like that so unfortunately the project has been delayed and at one point the project manager said that 
interplay and battle chess weren't really compatible with modern machines but then they changed their mind and said they would do because there was fans out there so best of luck with that back on the Amiga I'm still lost in the mire of Chinese chess so let's try and get two fighters fighting together and let's check out the new animation moves and sound effects So thank you for viewing my play guide and review to Battle Chess and Battle Chess 2 on the Amiga. Hope to see you again in our next play guide review sometime soon.